In this video, we are going to talk about what is happening in Europe. Recently, you must have seen that there has been some protest in Germany and then in France. People are protesting against their government. These protests are regarding rising cost of living, increase in energy prices, inflation, unemployment, etc. Some media houses have also labeled these section of the society as far right wing supporters. It sounds as if the left wingers don't want the cost of living to go down or have low energy prices. So anyhow, these kind of protests are going on and they are slowly becoming massive. There is very little coverage in the Western media because these are fault lines of any society and no one wants to reveal their fault lines. Plus, have you ever wondered why Angela Merkel stepped down? One reason is of course she's getting old. Her age was also above the retirement age in Germany. But then for politicians, there is no such thing as retirement age. Many world leaders are above the age of 70. The main reason she did not run for another term is because of her lack of new vision for the country. She stepped down in September 2021. She very well knew what was going to happen in the next couple of months. Do you think all this Russia-Ukraine war is a coincidence? It all started in the month of February. It is like looking at the tree which is above the soil. Once you take a look at the root, it is quite deep. Similarly, this whole Russia-Ukraine war planning began much earlier. I've also said this in one of my video. If you remember when United States left Afghanistan back in August 2021, that's when it all started. They had to find another conflict zone in the world. And today, Ukraine is the Afghanistan of Europe. Anyhow, so Angela Merkel lacked a new vision for her country because she knew what was going to happen and what was coming for Germany in the coming year. If you remember on September 26th this year, United States and Poland destroyed Russian Nord Stream gas pipeline in the Baltic Sea. I have a video on that as well. You all very well know that the Nord Stream gas pipeline connects the Russian coast to the German coast. And Russia never said that they are not going to give natural gas to Europe. The only condition Russia had that it wanted Europe to pay the payment in rubles, that is in Russian currency. Since Europe refused to do that, of course, after consultation with United States, that is when Russia slowly started reducing the gas supply, which eventually made the US so mad that they destroyed the gas pipeline on September 26th. Totally destroying any kind of future change of thoughts Europe may have towards Russia. But in this whole story, you will realize that the only European country that regrets all of this is Germany. In fact, if you remember from the beginning, Germany was not at all in favor of confronting Russia. Even France was not in favor of confronting Russia. But as you know, all these countries are part of NATO. NATO is not just a military alliance. It is also a political alliance. So European countries and the United States, although they look like individual sovereign countries, but their foreign policy is one, unilateral. So Germany and France had no option and they tagged along. And today, Germany is feeling the heat. Energy prices have gone up like anything. Without energy, how will industrial production take place? And with limited access to energy, the industrial production is going to get expensive. That causes inflation, increasing the cost of living. On the other hand, Poland got a new gas pipeline connecting from Norway. That means Poland has secured its own energy problem. And you know what is an interesting part? Nord Stream pipeline consists of two pipelines. The second pipeline did not even start its operations. United States even blew up that pipeline, making it impossible for any kind of future negotiation. And the new pipeline that connects to Norway, the supplying capacity of this pipeline is around 5 to 6 million cubic meters of gas per day. And you know the supplying capacity of Nord Stream 1 pipeline? It was 170 million cubic meters of gas per day. Plus the second pipeline is not even operational. That means Nord Stream pipelines is huge compared to this new Baltic pipeline. So definitely it's a huge loss for Germany's economy. So because of that, people in Germany, in some places, have started protesting against their government's energy policy. And they are also demanding the government to switch on and resume the Nord Stream pipeline. Because whether you like it or not, winter is coming. And it is going to get extremely cold in Europe. You can't burn your furniture and house to keep yourself warm, right? But then if you see, resuming the Nord Stream pipeline is against NATO's policy. Now slowly the German government is going to start to feel the pressure, whether to listen to their own people or to listen to NATO. Even in France, anti-NATO protest is picking up pace. French citizens are marching in Paris and they're demanding that France should exit NATO. What does it all say? It is very simple. Citizens of Germany and France, they are beginning to realize that the United States has created this mess. And if you see Germany and France, 
They are the two big European countries. These two respective countries' governments are desperately searching for energy alternative. And I'm sure they have also discussed this issue with United States President Joe Biden. That is the reason Joe Biden visited Saudi Arabia. He wanted to make sure that the Gulf Cooperation countries and OPEC produces more oil so that there is some relief in the gas prices in Europe and United States. And then as you know, Saudi Arabia and OPEC countries have happily declined United States' request. In fact, they have also increased the prices of oil and they have also decided to cut down their production. But compared to Germany, I would say France is somewhat protected. Because Germany used to import around 55% of its gas from Russia. And France only imports 17% from Russia. And the major share of gas to France comes from Norway. And further, if you see France's electricity, around two-thirds is generated through its nuclear power plants. But then you must also realize that France has around 56 nuclear power plants. And more than half of them are currently offline because of maintenance or safety issues. And now France is also asking its neighbors to give some electricity. So now, if you see, Norway has taken the place of Russia in supplying gas and oil to Europe. Let me also put it this way. Norway has become the center of Europe's energy security. European countries are counting on Norwegian gas to get them through the winter months. Plus, it is a fact that Norway is making a lot of money from this Russia-Ukraine war. The country which always used to talk about climate change, clean energy and all those big big words, today it is a major player in the oil and gas industry. And another interesting fact is, who is the current head of NATO? He is a Norwegian politician, Jens Stoltenberg. All kinds of military strategies against Russia, do you think Ukraine's force is doing it alone? Are you serious? They are getting constant inputs from NATO. So don't say that Ukraine is putting up a good fight against Russian military. No, Russia is fighting the entire NATO single-handedly, which I don't think any other country alone can do it in this world. Anyhow, so Norway is not even part of the European Union. It is linked with Europe through European Free Trade Association Agreement. So now the question is how much Europe can squeeze out of Norway? And how will Norway's present left-ruling coalition party will justify its stand to the public of Norway, who take great pride on the fact that they use clean energy to heat their homes and drive electric vehicles, and then on the other hand, sell fossil fuels for others to burn. This will definitely have political ramifications. Even UK is facing energy crisis, and further it is leading to economic crisis. Even Norway is now UK's primary gas supplier. UK's new prime minister, her approval ratings are going down day by day. Only 16-18% to 18 public supports her. UK, Germany and France, these three big countries are in great problem. And always remember, with energy crisis comes economic crisis. When economic crisis come, then all other issues, even the issues of immigration will again become the center point of public debate. Because the truth is, immigrants put an enormous strain on public services and infrastructure. And whether you like it or not, European as well as North American economy, which includes both United States and Canada, heavily relies on immigrants. And then what to say about these small-sized European countries? The energy crisis here would be much severe than these big European countries in the coming winter. I hope you are able to get a better picture about what is happening in Europe and how severe is the energy crisis going to be in the coming winter. Hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.